As always, my YouTube, that's where I post everything. I do lectures, I do this. I even have last orders. It should be last orders. Review should be there as well. Uh, in a moment, before I go over this other stuff, when we do the general questions, what I'm going to do is you can just tell me what topics you want to cover by raising the hands. I'll write them down and I'll cover that topic again. And uh, if I have a practice problem, I'll do it. Okay, so I'll get back to that in a moment while you can be thinking. Then I have just normal readers. I mean, you've been in class, so you should know about this. Somebody was asking me what's the difference between the practice exam from previous quarters and this one. Uh, I did some updates. Of course, the most recent exams are in there. That's obvious. Uh, the givens. If you're wondering what the heck is given on exam one, it's in here. And then the other thing that's in here is this practice finals, which I didn't have in the previous edition. So those are the big differences. Uh, somebody else is asking you what class I'm teaching next quarter because you didn't want to take my class. Unfortunately, I'm teaching 2B, most likely. I'd probably say 77% chance, but I haven't passed the office yet. So I will let you know, I have this thing called Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, I cannot help you. But on my Facebook, on the About Me section, is where, once I know, I would post there my upcoming classes. So you can always go there. Uh, that's usually where I post first, and then I'll announce the class the upcoming class. Uh, most likely, I would guess to be. Uh, the 10.30, no, it's like a 10.30 class that we've already taken. I'll leave this room to you guys. Okay, so here's our schedule. Uh, so one hour about general questions. You're going to give me topics, I'll cover those. This is how I have to do all my reviews, but since it's probably one of your first time doing my reviews, now you know. And then I'll spend about half an hour on I'll dismiss whoever's done and doesn't want to hear other people's questions. Uh, but if you have specific questions, you can ask me. Like, if you don't know how I did something on one of the practices here, you can ask me and I'll look through it. Or if you have some other specific questions, that's fine. And as always, I have office hours, Wednesdays, I believe it's 9.50, 2064, Science Lab building. Okay, I think I got everything. So let's start off with uh, some exam or uh, topics you'd like me to cover, and I'll write it down. So just by raising your hand, tell me what you'd like me to cover. Yeah. Okay. So combustion analysis. That's right. Combustion analysis. Yes. Okay. So redox related things. Okay. Yes, sir. Dilution. Yes. Polarity in general. Okay. Yes. Limiting reactants. Yes. That ionic. I'll do that with redox, just in general oxidation. Or do you mean oxidation states? That's you want oxidation state. That was the chapter three stuff. Yeah, no problem. Yes. Yeah. Consecutive reaction. Simultaneous is the same thing. Oh yes, yes. Same thing. Okay, that's fine. Oh, yes, there's one. Naming, okay. Yes. Sig bigs. Uh, and I guess like when there's addition and subtraction and all that, yeah. We'll probably see these when we do some examples. Okay, yes. Balancing, like uh, to do an example. How hard? Well, I see somebody say it's difficult to level the test, but then I can't say that. Uh, okay, maybe I'll do that when we do specific questions. I'm not sure. 
depending on what majority vote is. Okay, that looks like a good group. I guess nobody cares too much about chapter one two, which is fine. Still on the desk though. All right, uh, let's go through some of these, and there's quite a bit to do, so let me try to go somewhat fast. Some of these, quite a lot of these, I do have practice examples of. So we'll do that uh, as I find them. Okay, now let's start with molarity. Remember, it's moles of solute per liter of solution. There's three types of questions: the unit conversion, the dilution, which was asked about specifically and then the stoichiometry or titration. Okay, so those are the three types. Make sure you can tell the difference. Uh, stoichiometry will have a reaction involved and it'll be, uh, the molecules of interest will be multiple. Uh, these two will have one molecule of interest, or one compound of interest, but the dilution will be changing molarity and volume. The unit conversion won't. Uh, it'll just be having to convert. Uh, so, what I'll say specifically about it is what otherwise we were asked is the dilution. So let's uh, elaborate on this one. M1V1 equals M2V2. You can really see a couple different kinds of examples uh, on the practice exams. Uh, there's one, if you look through the booklet, I uh, won't do it now, but if you want to ask me later if you can find it, I'm not sure where it is. There's one about wine. That's a type of dilution where it adds one wine to another. Uh, it's kind of a more complicated one. There's the one that just straight up uses this formula, and there's other ones that use kind of variants of this formula. So let me uh, explain sort of two for us. Okay. So let's say uh, you can pick any molecule. Let's say we have NaCl aqueous. And then you can do this with your friends. You just pick up random numbers. So let's say it started with 50 milliliters initially, okay? And it'll say something like, we're gonna change the milliliters to a final volume of, let's say, 225 milliliters. And the initial molarity will be, say, 6.0 molar. And I wanna know the final molarity. So that'd be M2, okay? So you just set it up as is. 6 molar, 50 milliliters. And what this does, milliliters times molarity, that'll give me moles, or technically millimoles. And so I'll know the initial moles, and then that's going to equal the final moles. So if you're just adding water, you do not change the moles of the solution. This will be uh, M2 times 225 milliliters. And that'll be, that's the final in this case. And so you just simply solve. You don't need to change the units from milliliters to liters because they're both the same. They back could be in gallons or things like that. The only time there'd be an issue if the molarity, and you'll see this on one of the practice, a pretty tough molarity problem, one of the practice problems. If the molarity is given with a density and potentially a percent mass, then you need to convert to molarity. Because what that means is usually the density will be changing over time, and that will, those don't straight up convert. You must convert them individually to molarity and then do the calculation. However, density, percent mass are not given. You can put whatever unit it is straight in here. Okay. So, uh, you just do this calculation. I just made it up, so I don't have an answer. Uh, but I want to add something to it in just a second here. So, 6 times 50 divided by 225. 1.3 repeating. So, 1.3. How many sig figs do I want? 2 because of the 6, so 1.3 molar. Okay, it was 1.333 times 1.3 molar. Okay. Now, let's just put a slight variant on this, and you'll, you should see this in our practice home. Oh, by the way, is anybody here in my class? Okay, it's all my class. Oh, that dude up there? When's your exam? Oh, okay, cool. I would just come here randomly, too. Okay, awesome. So, uh, there could be a slight variance in this problem. Let's say we picked, let's say we had aluminum chloride now, okay? And we still have a sodium chloride, okay, and that was 6 
molar, and that was 50 milliliters. Let's say we still have that. We don't add any water. Oh, by the way, let's go back for just a moment. How much uh, water did I have to add to make this happen? 175, right? This number minus this number. That's a pretty common question. So how much water was added to make this dilution occur? Just the difference between the two volumes, V2 minus V1. Okay. So uh, let's say this is 3 molar, and let's say it's 100 milliliters, okay? Sometimes they ask you for the molarity of the chloride ion, and there's one just like this in the homework. Uh, if they ask you for the molarity of the chloride ion, and you're adding these two fit together, so you're taking this solution and this solution, and you're adding them up. Okay, what do you do in that case? What I recommend, remember the, the common uh, issue is that moles don't change. So the moles before equals the moles final, and that's why we can have this equation right here. So what I would do is find the moles. So I'd say, let's say the sodium chloride, you'd go six moles per liter. So it'd be, you wouldn't use the dilution equation per se, but you could. This is how I'd recommend doing it though. And then you multiply by 50 milliliters. And these units don't cancel, so you need to make sure and get this straight to 1,000 milliliters per liter. That will give me moles of sodium chloride initially. And you see that there's one chlorine in every one NaCl, right? So let me just write that down. One, there's one mole of chloride ion for every mole of NaCl. Again, I'm interested in What's the molarity, molarity of chloride after mixing? Okay, that's what I'm interested in. What's the molarity of the chloride ion after mixing? So we've got chloride ion here and chloride here. What do you do in the multiple sources? Okay, same thing for the AlCl3. That's three molar, which is three moles per liter. It's 100 milliliters. The milliliters and liters don't cancel, so do a little SI conversion. Now, what am I going to put here? Three moles of chloride for every one mole of AlCl3. Because there's three fluorines in every one aluminum chloride. This, the top one is going to be the moles of chloride from the sodium chloride. The bottom one is the moles of chloride from the aluminum chloride, what I'm simply going to do is add these up. And this will equal the total moles after mixing. If I have the total moles after mixing, this could be some number, how do I find the molarity? And this is the total moles of chloride specifically. Because moles of chloride here, moles of chloride here. How would I find, if I have moles, how am I going to go to molarity? Divide by the volume, which is? If I, let's get a different color here. Divide by the total volume, which is what? You got it. 100 plus 50. I will now have the molarity of the chloride. See how that works when you have multiple compounds? Or multiple sources in this case. Multiple sources of chloride. You have to find the moles, add them up. Then you have the total moles, divide by the total volume. Any questions on this? Okay. Uh, by the way, since somebody asked, how many sig figs will I have for the total volume after adding? Not three. Four, yeah. Okay, maybe I should do that. One hundred point uh, zero and a fifty point zero. The hundred has four, right? Three, four, six, figs. This has three. I add them up. The error is in the tenths place. So I'm going to carry the tenths place down. Zero, one fifty. So all these will count as six figs because the error is in. The last one, this is the last sig fig right there, the tenth. So it's four sig figs when you add those two numbers. 
All right, cool. That's a dilution check. Question? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. For the final answer, how many sig figs would there be? How many would be right here? It's a little bit of estimation, but probably, probably two. But I would have to do the math because you are adding. But you get two from here and two from here. You'll see how much after adding, and then probably this will be the smaller number. You take that number. Okay. Cool. Do that at home with your aunt or something. All right, uh, next, let's do naming an oxidation state. Next. Okay. These two. Ooh. Okay. So, oxidation state, let's try that out. What's the oxidation state of bromine here? Zero, it's elemental form. Okay, let's try a hard one. Uh, there we go. Uh, for magnesium, what would it be? Plus two, straight from the periodic table. Oxygen. Minus two, again, straight from the periodic table. Now, carbon's the one you'll have to calculate. Plus four, let's see if that works. Uh, that works in my mind. Okay, should I write out how we got plus four? Would that be helpful? Yeah, okay, so if you can't see it in your head, that's fine. Just make sure you write it out. Uh, this comes from the carbonate ion. Magnesium plus carbonate. So you just set up a little formula. Negative two, which is the overall charge, two minus, equals the carbon oxidation state plus three times the oxygen oxidation state equals carbon, we already know oxygen is minus two from the periodic table. Uh, so this will be carbon minus six, add six to both sides. So it'll be six minus two equals carbon, which is gonna be plus four. Okay. All right, let's try another one. Um, okay, this, now we're getting slightly crazy. Okay, love it. I love it. Okay. Don't worry, it'll get way harder. Okay. How about aluminum? From the periodic table, plus three. That one's pretty. Rarely is aluminum something else. Sometimes plus one. Okay. Oxygen. Almost always minus two. Hydrogen. Almost always plus one. Sometimes it can be minus one. And then zero if it's an element of form. So we really want to know about phosphorus. Uh, you can, if you want to do it faster than me, you can start right now. Uh, H2PO4, you can just go straight to this, has what charge? Negative 1, it's one of your polyatomic cations, or anions. Negative 1 is overall charge, there's two hydrogens, there's phosphorus, and there's four oxygens. You just set up a little formula. Negative 1 equals 2, and now fill in the blanks. Hydrogen is plus 1, phosphorus we don't know, oxygen is minus 2. So that's minus 1 equals 2 plus P minus 8. So uh, that's P minus 6 equals negative 1. And then add 6 to both sides. 6 minus 1 equals phosphorus or plus 5 for phosphorus. Which is pretty common for <coughs> phosphorus if you count over it's 5 from the end. Okay, now let's try a harder one just so you can see what a really hard one would look like. It's more hard mentally than it is in reality. Uh, let's just go. Right here. Uh, ooh, yes. transition metal complex, and this is a transition metal, and it can get crazy. Uh, just look at the individual charges. So, water is 
Is it here or Hydroxide. Yeah, it's an ion, hydroxide ion. Oops, I wrote zero for some reason. Minus one. And H3. That's ammonia, that's zero. Okay? And then K. Plus one from the periodic table. The alkalis and alkali aerosols follow that pattern of plus one, plus two, respectively. Copper is the only one we really don't know. But what do we expect it could be? What's possible? You know your common charges. One or two. Look in the lecture notes if you don't know the common charges. It's probably one or two. It doesn't have to be, though. It could be something else. But uh, that's a good way to start. Okay. Now, if this K is plus one, let me get a different color here, then this everything in brackets is minus one. So just like if I said KCl, you know K is plus one and this is minus one. Same thing. Okay, so what you would do is you would say copper plus two waters plus two hydroxides plus two ammonias equals overall charge of what again? You see that negative one right there? Plus one's for potassium. Uh, you could have said, I'd have to put potassium in the equation for you to say zero, but I didn't. I'm just trying to kind of narrow down on just the anion. Just like I did before, if you look at these, look, I narrowed down, if I'm interested in phosphorus, I narrowed down in the platonic anion. Here, if I go backwards even a little bit more, I was interested in carbon, so I narrowed in on the carbonate ion. So it just kind of takes out the cation uh, and makes slightly less math. Okay, so now let's fill in what we know. Copper is what we don't know. There's two waters, each are zero. There's two hydroxides, each at minus one. And there's two ammonias, each is zero. Equals negative one. So copper plus zero minus two plus zero equals negative one. Uh, add two to both sides. Copper equals minus one plus two or plus one, which is one of the ones we expected. So this could be called a copper one ion, just a copper plus one or a cupless ion. All right, that's all I have for oxidation states. Let's do some naming examples. some of the ones we just did. I look at this, I see a metal because of it, but not a transition metal, it's the magnesium. And because there's a, a polyatomic anion, it's, everything's named as is. And in my head is my name template that's in the lecture notes. Uh, so it's just named as is. But if I had this, something like that, now I have, again, a metal, so it's ionic. But the first name is the same. But the second name is not iodine. It's, uh, you have to put the I-D-E ending, so iodine. Okay? Then, when I do something like this now, it's still a metal, so it's still an ionic. So, but this is a transition metal. So I have two possible first names. The second name, just like up the first one, uh, up there at the top, is carbonate. But the first name could be either iron. Nope. Uh, iron. Iron is what? If this is minus two, this must be plus two. Is that okay? Carbonate is minus uh, two. So it could either be iron two carbonate or fair. <coughs> Is two the higher or the lower one? Lower, so it's ferrous carbonate. Okay? Uh, so likewise, FeI2 would be ferrous iodide or iron 2 iodide. Okay, let's try some. This one doesn't have a metal, but you see that NH4, that's one of your polyatomic anions, which will fit for us in the metal category. So you consider this ionic. So the first one's called ammonium. What's the second one called? Acetate. Good. Okay, ammonium acetate. 
Now you see hydrogen in front. That's an acid. There's only two types of atoms, the hydrogen and fluorine. So you need a hydro in front. You need the stem of the anion, fluor. Careful, flower. <laughs> put that. And then you need the ic ending. So hydro prefix, ic ending, and then acid. Just write acid and get half credit. Usually how we grade these, by the way, they're usually two points each. And then you lose one, lose a point for every mistake. Okay, so a spelling mistake would be a minus one out of two. If you have multiple mistakes, you go down until you hit zero. So you're either going to get a two, a one, or a zero. Uh, okay, what else is there? So here you have multiple atoms. Then you have to name this. It's a nitrate. So the A changes it to an ic, nitric acid, or if you have something like this, H3PO4, this is phosphoric acid because it comes from the phosphate. Okay? And then there's a whole bunch of possible molecular compounds. Uh, I will, let me see if I can, I cannot pick one so I'll make up something. There we go. I don't know if this is real. Just made it up. Try for three. So you see no metal now, and you don't see a hydrogen in front. This is a molecular. And so this is triphosphorus. Okay? And then the second name, remember, you got to name these, suffix, uh, these subscripts here. A uh, hepta, hepta ox I. And I kind of messed up something here. If you have two vowels together, in this case the A and the O, you cut this vowel that's in the prefix. So really, heptoxide is what you would say. Just like you would say, you don't say for a CO, carbon monoxide, you say carbon monoxide. So you cut the last vowel if there's two vowels in a row. And that's the last vowel of the prefix. All right, I think that's pretty good with naming. You just gotta do a lot of practice. Look at my YouTube videos, there's tons of examples there. Okay, what else? And we kind of are doing sick things by proxy. All right, um, let me see if I have an example of uh, limiting reactants that we want to try. And maybe I'll go there if I can find them. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're going to go to limiting reactants example here. Aluminum sulfide. So you need to figure out that aluminum sulfide, because that's these two ions will look like this, Al2S3, uh, reacts with uh, water. Uh, and in this example, they don't ask you to write the products, they just give it to you. But uh, let's write it out. Remember, water is HOH. So what kind of reaction is there? A double replacement. You're going to put aluminum with a hydroxide. Remember, the hydroxide is OH minus, the H is a plus. So aluminum hydroxide, Al, you need three OHs cause to balance the three plus of the aluminum. And then you get an H and an S, but S is two minus, H is plus one, so you need two H's to balance that charge out. Okay, erase this, don't need this. Okay, now let's see what it gives us. 158 grams of this, 158.0 grams of this, 131 grams of water. Uh, first, what should I do before I do any math? Yeah, always think balance. I won't always tell you if a reaction is not balanced. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to two here. Sulfur three. And that would be uh, three of these. Oh, I might need more. Actually, six. Will that do it? I think that does it. Okay. Now, we want to find the... Uh, 
I want to find at 100%, at 100% yield, I want the mass of H2S and it's a gas produced, okay? The reason we put in that 100% yield, you don't always see this. Sometimes you can see the words theoretical yield. The reason we put that is we're meaning it all goes to completion. So it's not, there's no side reactions, there's nothing funny going on. So it means just be normal, okay? Do a typical calculation is what that's intending. So here's how we do this. We have a limiting reactant problem because we have two compounds that will lead to um, where information is given that's connected to moles for which you can calculate the mass of the products. So we need to use two separate calculations. Let's do that. For the first one, 158.0 grams of that. Let's see if I have a molar mass or not. Uh, I think it's 150.17 from the periodic table. Okay, and that's the moles of the reactant. If I want the moles of the product, there's three moles of H2S for every uh, one mole of Al2, uh, ooh, Al2S3. Okay, let me see what this one is. This one is the mass. So we'll go one more step. H2S is 34.09, somewhere around there, grams per mole of H2S. This will give me the grams of H2S. So the first one, I got 107.4. Okay, now I have to do the identical calculation, but with water. So with water, you do the same thing, start off with 131 grams, that's what's given. Uh, molar mass of water is 18.1 grams per mole. And then there's six moles of water on bottom. On top, you want to go to H2S, so it's three moles H2S. <coughs> and then one last step, it's 34.09 grams per mole of H2S. And this turns out to be 123.7. Okay, so in this case, which one's the correct answer, top or bottom? Definitely the top, it's a smaller answer, so that's aluminum sulfide is the limiting reactant. Okay, the last part of the question is as follows. So 107.4 is the correct answer because it's a smaller number. Final answer, calculate the percent yield. Uh, if 21.0 grams of H2S were the actual amount produced, this is the simplest part. Percent yield is just going to equal 21, the amount given, divided by the amount calculated, 107.4 grams. And uh, you need to multiply this by 100%. Change this back to 2%. And we got 19.6. Oh, that's interesting. 19.6%. I kept three sig figs because there's three sig figs uh, in the top versus four in the bottom. Uh, originally, I didn't think about the original one too much, but we got four sig figs because the original had four sig figs. So that works too. Okay, there's what we need. Reactor problem. Let's see how we're doing on time. 8.30, not bad. Okay. You all were interested. I, I, ha I do have in my notes a uh, consecutive reaction problem that I have not done yet. So let me go to that one. These just take a little getting used to. Uh, and once you get the tricks down, we'll start to do it. Okay. Move this, move this over. Let's do a consecutive reaction problem. So here we go. All right, I gotta do a little bit of writing. So will you? Here we go. Oh my gosh. You okay with like a medium difficult one? Is that cool? Well, that's what you see on the test anyway. Unless I was crazy. Two B plus three half O two 
goes to B2O3. Yeah. And then, oh, I, sh I need to say two. This is solid, this is a gas, and this is a solid. Okay, second reaction. B2H6 gas plus 3O2 gas goes to B2O3 solid plus 3H2O gas. Next, uh, this is the third reaction. H2 gas plus 1 half O2 gas goes to H2O liquid. Next one and last one, kind of H2O liquid goes to H2O gas. And then there's the overall reaction, which is, yeah, there we go. The B solid plus 3 halves H2 gas goes to 1 half B2H6. Luckily on the exam, it will be written out for you. Okay. Let's try this. Uh, basically, there's two things we really want to do. One is identify the intermediates. And the second uh, will be to find the multipliers for each reaction such that they add to the overall. So up here would be the consecutive or simultaneous reactions. Down here would be the overall. The intermediates, let's list them down here, is anything that doesn't appear, that appears up here but not in the overall. So what's an example of intermediate? Uh, water, yeah. Water, liquid, and water gas. Both. So steam and liquid water, anything else? Oxygen, yeah, doesn't appear down here, so O2 gas. Is that everything? How about the, the boron oxide, B2O3 solid? I think that's it. It's good to know what those are outside of me asking you. It helps you find the multipliers. Okay, so step one, what I want to do is there's two kind of strategies I have, or two steps in my strategy. One is to look here and see if any of these appear up here only once. So if any of these molecules appear in the consecutive reactions only once. Boron, right? So let's uh, make a box around that, brown box. Boron solid appears only once. So. Now that's good because what I want in my final answer is one boron in the reactants. Right now I have two. So what I'm going to do is take this reaction right here and multiply by what? One half. That'll give me one boron in the reactants. Okay. H2 appears how many times up here? Oh, just once, right? Okay, I'm going to get a different color and a different symbol. Let's do a circle for H2. Okay. So, I need three halves H2 in the reactants. Remember, this is the correct answer. I have one. So, I'm going to multiply this by times three halves. That will give me three halves in the reactants. All right. B2H6 appears... Oh, just once, right here, right? So, I need one half of this compound in the products. I have one of them in the reactants. So I gotta do a lot of craziness here. Uh, let's get, first get a symbol for that. Uh, the triangle, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna take this reaction and multiply by one. I want a negative to flip it because I need it in the products and it's in the reactants. What else? I want a half because I need a half in the products, not just one. So multiply that by minus one half. I ran out of room so I had to put it in the front. Okay, I need one last multiplier for this down here. I'm, I can't use my current strategy of comparing with the overall. So my other uh, my additional other step in the strategy is to compare intermediates, okay? So, uh, water gas appears here and here. It looks like the water liquid here and here. Which one? You're in the front row. Gases or liquids? What's your favorite? Okay, let's find out. So liquids, no cold, there's nothing against you. I just, I don't know. Liquids, I don't have any more. 
more symbols. A shoe? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never used that before. This is the first time in a chemistry class ever. You a shoe around the car. Okay? So, I, I need, now for this other part of the strategy, the water intermediates, more specifically, must cancel. So this water, liquid, must cancel. There, this one is fixed because it has a whole I can't change it. So there's three halves in the products here. To get this to cancel, I must multiply this by positive three halves. Positive three halves. Why? Because this is three halves in the products, this is three halves in the reactants, that will cause them to cancel on the opposite sides. Exactly. Okay, I'm done. If I trust my math with those multipliers and these intermediates, I'm totally done with the problem. Okay. Any questions? Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, there is a question. If H2O liquid were in the reaction and there was one in the products, then I would have to flip it. Yes. yes. Exactly. So make sure you know the difference between the comparing with the reaction and comparing the intermediates are two parts of one strategy. The, the last half step will multiply by three halves. Okay. That last step, remember this was not here a moment ago, this three halves, but this was. And I have three halves of water in the products. Water I know is an intermediate, and I must cancel this. So I'm going to cancel with this intermediate, which is in the next reaction. If there's three halves here, consider these as equal signs like a match. Then I have three halves on the other side of the equal sign, and they'll cancel out. Good. Good. That's good. We need to get that clear so you can do these kinds of problems. All right, next. Um, I'm going to make my way to net ionic because I think I have some examples of that uh, that I have not done in class. Well, Actually, if you're all coming to class, I'm going to do some net ionic examples in class. Does that find you want me to hold on that one and do a redox? Yeah. I'll do a redox. Uh, and let's do uh, oh, I have a tough one. Yes. Do you want, this is like choose your own adventure. Uh, you have to vote here. I believe I have two kinds of tough ones to choose from. Uh, yeah, there's different kinds of toughness. There is a tough, conceptual, easy math. Well, I don't know, tough, and depends on what you think is tough. And then there is a somewhat easier, conceptual, but tougher math. Do you want the math to be harder or the concept to be harder? No, there, I mean, I don't know if we'll have time for both. So we'll do the one that is tougher conceptually. That's this one. If you want to see this, if you want to see the other one, if you want to do it at home, they're nerdy like that, okay. I get it, I understand. I wouldn't do that, nor admit to it. But if you want to see the other one, it's up here at the top. Okay, we're going to do the one on the bottom. <laughs> this one is, uh, yeah, it's tough, more tough conceptually. I mean, no, mathematically. This is the easier, it's going to be easier mathematically, but tougher conceptually a little bit. Okay, let's do this bottom one now. Uh, let's, what's the charge of uh, oxidation state of hydrogen here? Zero. In fact, this was an exam question one time that a lot of people missed. What's the oxidation state here on oxygen? Yeah, don't put minus two here because it's a lone elemental form. Remember in your flow chart, it's easy to get confused. The lone element determination comes before determining the oxidation state of oxygen. So, uh, this is zero. How about here, you know, that's minus two, hydrogen is plus one. Okay. So, uh, let's write this out. Uh, okay, now let's do this one. Okay. Hydrogen is 
oxidized. Remember, oxidation means increasing oxidation state, 0 to 1. So this must be reduced. It is. That means it's reducing its oxidation state here from 0 to minus 2. Okay? So you'll see we're about to get to the super fun part. Oh. Uh, let's see, which one do I want to write first? Let's write the uh, oxidation, half re uh, oxidation half reaction. H2 goes to what? Okay, some people think H2O. Okay, maybe we'll start on the next one. Reduction, O2 goes to what? If you put O here, that is crazy. A lot of people do that, but that's crazy wrong. Better be telling you now than on the test, right? Okay, can't put O here. You cannot put an H here. Huh? You cannot put a hydroxide there. Any other guesses of what to put in the product? 2H plus? 2H plus? plus two H. Uh, now you're getting to balancing it, so you're skipping a step. I wouldn't put H plus either. I wouldn't put water either. I wouldn't put water. I wouldn't put anything. That's the answer. Don't put anything. Here's the secret. Good, we did want this one, I guess. Uh, if you see any of the following, H2O, or OH minus, it's kind of on scratch here on the side, or H plus in the reaction that we are asking you to balance via redox, I would ignore it and pretend it's not even there as far as the half reaction balancing method. And here's the problem. It, this would work out eventually mathematically, but you'd guess all kinds of random stuff in here, and it's okay to have nothing there. That's totally fine. Because remember, now we're coming up to our four steps, and in the four steps, it will take care of the issue. Let's prove it to you. Let's do the reduction one first. Step one of the four, balance whatever not oxygen or hydrogen. Skip that, there's nothing like that. Step two, balance oxygen. There's two, what are we gonna balance with? Water. Oh, if you guess water, I hope you put it on the bottom one and not the top one. And that's why I told you to ignore it because it's easy to guess the wrong one. Okay. Step uh, three, balance hydrogen with H plus. There's four hydrogens on the right, so we need four H pluses on the left. And then step four, balance the charge. Right now there's uh, <coughs> plus four on the left, there's zero on the right. So I'm going to add to here four electrons. Okay? All right, next. Uh, top one, step one, balance whatever not hydrogen or oxygen, doesn't apply. Step two, balance the oxygens, no oxygens. Step three, balance the hydrogens. And this is what somebody was saying, H plus is. What you're doing, if you said H plus is what you're doing is kind of taking a step fitting into the balancing part. Okay, step four, balance the charge. It's plus two here, zero here, so I need two electrons. Okay, now the balance, notice it did not matter that I had no products in the beginning. That's totally fine. You don't need to have something there when you're doing redox. It can be totally empty if these are the three that I would even erase from the problem or not put in the half reaction. Okay? All right. Uh, now, I multiply the top by. Remember the electrons must cancel. 2 and the bottom line 1. Okay? And we'll add these things up. So, 2H2 plus uh, O2 plus 4H plus goes to 4H plus plus 2H2O. Simplify. 2. H2 plus O2 goes to 2H2O. All right, now let's do a couple things first. I don't know why you guys want to balance it via redox. You could have just put a two and a two here. But uh, when I had this as a practice, as an exam problem, I forced you all to do it via redox, okay? All right, second uh, issue, uh, what, 
kind of answer is this? Remember those acidic and basic conditions? We solved it via the acidic conditions, but what's the issue with my answer? There's no H plus. In fact, there's no OH minus, so it really is neither acidic nor basic. Uh, but this would be the answer if they ask you to balance it. Okay? All right, cool. We did redox. I'll have to see later. Let's see if I can find a combustion analysis problem for you. I do I have one? Let me see if I have one. I'm not sure. Same thing with the hydrogen. 
I got 2.0 moles of hydrogen. It's 1.008 grams per mole from the periodic table. And this turns out to be uh, 2.016 grams of hydrogen. So now that I have that, what I'm going to do with that information is to go to oxygen. First I have to go to the mass of oxygen. And I do that by saying, well, the total moles of the original complex uh, C X H Y O Z. We call the moles of carbon plus the moles of hydrogen plus the moles of oxygen. And I have this information. Uh, well, I said moles. I think mass total equals mass carbon plus mass hydrogen plus mass oxygen. So I have hydrogen. It's right there. I have carbon. It's right there. I have total. It's up here. And I just want the mass of the oxygen. So. 15, just put in the numbers, 15.22 grams equals, and I'm just copying it down from above, 7.93 grams plus 2.016 grams plus the mass of oxygen. So I'm going to solve for the mass of oxygen. That turns out to be uh, 5.28 grams. And I, again, I don't want mass, I want moles. The reason I want moles is moles will equal Z, the subscript for oxygen. So, my next step is to say, well, 5.28 grams times uh, the atomic mass of oxygen from the periodic table, 16, will change me to moles, which is uh, 0.33 moles. Okay. So all, all of this, you can see the moles of oxygen and the moles of hydrogen was one line of work, but all of this was just to find the moles of oxygen. It's always the same flow, just make sure you get used to it. So now we want to go to the empirical formula. Okay, the empirical formula. C, X, H, Y, O, Z is going to be X is the moles of carbon, which was 0 0.66. H was the moles of hydrogen, which was 2. And O, the moles of carbon, uh, oxygen, sorry, is 3.33. 3, 3. Well, divide by the smallest, that's 0 0.33. And this is going to be uh, carbon, uh, let's see, 2. Hydrogen, uh, what do I get, 6. And oxygen, 1. There we go. You wouldn't need to write one. That would be your final answer. Uh, let's see. And uh, bonus, what's the mass percent of carbon? So if they ask you to find the mass percent of carbon, and you can do this for hydrogen, you can do this for oxygen, it doesn't matter. But just focus on one. The mass percent of carbon would be the mass of carbon. We found that up above. It's 7.93. Found that up above 7.93 grams. And the total mass of the original compound, 15.22. That was given in the problem. Times 100%, and that's the mass percent of carbon. This turns out to be 51.2. So these are easy problems to pair together. All right. We're about 9 o'clock. I think I'll close this part of the session up. Uh, go ahead and sit. If you're going to stay, stay in your seats. If you're going to leave, kick off. In about a minute, I'll just take questions from people. So if you have a question, let's just let people want to go walk.